In your high school English classes, you probably talked about some of the British Romantic poets. Keats, Shelley, Lord Byron. You picture these guys with their uh, puffy shirts, having picnics in deserted castles and that sort of thing. Uh, and then you also probably talked about some of the American Romantics, like Walt Whitman and all his poems about America. Emily Dickinson, all her poets, poems about death. And Edgar Allan Poe and all his poems about all kinds of different things and stories about all kinds of different things. This wide diversity of writers who are associated with the era of Romanticism. But they do all have some elements in common, as we discussed last week, this fascination with nature, with death, and deep emotions. Today we're going to talk about their French counterparts, who are sometimes called the symbolist poets or the decadents. The term symbolism comes from this idea that these poets believed art should represent an absolute truth that could only be described indirectly. So you couldn't just say that absolute truth. It had to be stated through some kind of symbol, some kind of metaphor. So these are highly metaphorical poems. It's also a reaction to realism, which is a style of literature that we'll get to in the next unit, next week, when we start talking about Flaubert. The term decadent has really more to do with the lifestyles of these poets. These guys spent a lot of money. They like to party. Their favorite drink was absinthe, also known as the Green Fairy. Absinthe has a bad reputation uh, that's not entirely deserved because it's extremely strong. It's said to be hallucinogenic and drive people insane. In fact, the, in the early 20th century, absinthe was banned in most countries, including the United States. It's no longer banned in the United States, although there are some restrictions on what ingredients they're allowed to use. It's your liquor lesson incorporated into the literature lesson for today. The decadents were also really influenced by Gothic literature like our friend Edgar Allan Poe, who we all know and love. Now the first poet we want to talk about is Baudelaire. He's not really a symbolist himself, but his collection, Flowers of Evil, was extremely influential on the next generation of French poets who did call themselves symbolists. Especially influential on this movement is a poem called Correspondences, which you'll read in your packet. There's an idea called synesthesia, which is kind of a uh, confusing of the senses, and in this poem, scent becomes color, which becomes taste, which becomes touch, and all the senses kind of run together as one thing. And that's an idea that a lot of the symbolist poets used. Uh, Baudelaire also was one of the first people to translate Edgar Allan Poe into French. So you can, you'll be able to see the influence there. Baudelaire was not really into nature. He famously said, I find myself incapable of feeling moved by vegetation. Instead, he found inspiration by walking through the city. He coined the term flaneur, which roughly translates to saunterer. It's a person who basically wanders the city streets, experiencing the city. His work, you'll see, can be rather shocking, even to our own modern sensibilities, and so imagine how people took it 200 years ago. Verlaine is the next generation. He's one of the first poets to call himself a symbolist. He's sometimes criticized for being a little too literal in his poetry, uh, but he was a master of form, and you'll especially see this, I think, in the Wooden Horses poem, like you get a sense of this carousel going around and around, making you feel kind of drunk with dizziness. Verlaine had a love affair with our next poet, Rambeau, not to be confused with Rambo. Rambeau was a younger poet. Verlaine shot him in the arm during an argument and went to prison for a little while. Rambo himself was a young genius. He basically wrote all of his poetry between the ages of 15 and 20, and then he gave it up. So... Uh, interesting character. There was a movie about the relationship between Verlaine and Rambeau, and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio plays Rambeau in that film. Can't remember who plays Verlaine, but you can look it up on IMDb. Anyway, that's all I've got for this video. It's a short one. We've got a lot more information in your packet, a lot of stuff to do this week, so let's get busy, let's get reading. I hope you have fun. Talk to you later.